Hello, my name is Lee and welcome to today's video tutorial. Today, we're going to be creating procedural rocks in 3D Studio Max. So with that being said, let's get started. Firstly, what I want to do is I want to go to the geometry and create a box. Then I can set the length, width and height segments to 20. Once I've done this, I can also change the um, length, width and height segments to five by five by five. And then what we need to do is we need to change the location of the pivot point of the box. So by going to the hierarchy tab, we can change the effect of pivot only and choose center to object. Then I, what I can do is at the bottom of the user interface, I can um, right click the X, Y, Z spinners, which will center our model to the center of the world. Now what I want to do is I want to add a UVW unwrap. And the reason I'm adding a UVW unwrap now is because we're going to be creating a high poly model. I want to make it easier. So if in the future I'd like to reuse this asset, I can simply um, use some simple textures. And all I do here is I just select all of the um, faces and I choose to, un to do an automatic unwrap. And then here you can see I'm just simply stitching them together. Once everything has been stitched together, I can simply choose to pack the UVs into the zero one space and that will place everything inside the um, texture space here. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to add a spherify. So I'm going to press the S key until I can find the spherify and that's going to change our box into a sphere. Then we're going to add a turbo smooth to the modify stack and set the iterations to about five. Now, depending on your computer, you may want to choose a higher or lower number, but for the purpose of this tutorial, five is pretty good. Now, all I'm going to do here is just apply a simple material to our model. Just makes things a little easier to look at and a little better for our presentational purposes. So now what I want to do is I want to add a displace modifier to the stack and I'm going to click on the maps here. And I want to choose the option that says cellular. Then I'm going to click and drag this into the materials editor and set the option when it appears to be, um, to be, uh, instance. And that's going to allow us to change both the settings at the same time. Now inside the displacement roller, I also want to set the mapping type to spherical, and this is going to allow us to get correct mapping. Now the idea here is all we have to do now is change the uh, color swatches you can see we have a white a sort of mid gray and a black and what we're going to do is just change those in order to get this effect now we can also change some other options here like the size um that is within the rollout and the way that we deform the shape is by changing the um is by changing the displacement amount so giving us a, a minus value will push the, the polygons inwards as we can see here and if we choose a plus um, amount, then the polygons are going to sort of bloat out. It's going to look like as if the as if the, something has been blown up, for example. So simply by um, modifying the settings within the um, uh, cellular option here, we can change the different shapes. And you can see here just by scrolling through some of these settings, I can quickly change and iterate to different um, different shapes and different rock formations. Now, once you're happy with that, what you can do is then add a new displacement modifier onto the top of your stack. And this time, um, under the maps, we want to choose noise. Okay. So by changing the noise value, we're going to get um, sort of this uh, more micro sort of cellular type level of detail. Now, right now, you can see that it's just expanding and contracting the actual model. And the reason for that is due to the scale inside of the noise parameters. So what I basically do is I change this to, uh, fr well, you can change it to either fractal or turbulence. You sort of want to play around and find the value that you find best. You can change the scale and uh, the color swatches. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to open the output and I want to place in some custom values. And by doing so, what I can do is manipulate how the noise um, is, uh, how the appearance of the noise is. So this is something you can also play around with. Maybe have some different values here inside the output and you just want to play around with um, the different settings. And the whole point here is that 
once you have settings that you like or similar to what you want in the future you can basically just copy this rock change some of those values and get different rocks now once you're happy with the overall shape what you can then do is add a melt modifier to the top and this is just going to set it on the ground it's going to look as if it's been on the ground for a while and the bottom part is flat um, depending on if that is something you want or not in this particular case it is so again as i said i just added a melt modifier and as you can see here i'm just going to show you that i can quickly once that has um, been completed iterate through different types of rocks and play around with some of the settings to get a more fine finer tuned model Now the next step after that is you want to generate a low polygon model. So I'm just going to save this to my desktop. And then what I want to do is I want to open up this in ZBrush and just allow ZBrush to do some automatic um, retopology for me and to generate new um, UV maps for our low poly model. Now, once we're here inside ZBrush, what we can do is we can import our model from the desktop. And it's really at this point, if you wanted to, you could continue to sculpt and edit this model in the way that you want. But we don't want to do that. Um, we just want to generate some low poly uh, model from this. So first of all, I'm just going to select a material that I like. And then I'm going to go and um, lower the polygon count to our model. So in order for me to reduce the polygons, I'm going to be using the Z, Z remesher. So I go under geometry and click Z remesher and I can play around with the resolution to get a better result. And so just by toggling the um, resolution backwards and forwards, I can sort of find um, exactly what it is that I want to achieve in terms of um, polygon um, density. Now, for perhaps a game model what is going to be used many many times you may want to reduce the polygons even more by doing a custom retopology but for the purposes of this tutorial this is going to be perfectly fine now the next thing i want to do is i want to use the uh, uv master in order for us to generate some uv mapping for our newly created low polygon model so I basically, I just dock the um, UV master to the right hand side of the user interface. And then inside the settings, I can choose the options here that says protect or attract. And so I enable the um, UV mode and I choose attract and protect. Now what I want to do is when I'm painting red is the areas that I want to protect. And I want to try and protect as much of the flatter surfaces as possible. And then once that's complete, what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll sort of find some of the more harsher edges. And that's where I start to lay down um, some of the attract um, seams. So here I'm just going to keep going through and you see this area is only slightly, um, only has like a, a, a slight change in curvature. So I keep as much as that as possible. Um, as one UV island and um, as you can see now I'm then I'm now switching over to the attract mode and I just want to paint along where those harder edges are and that's why I want to um, attract the seams now in our particular case it doesn't really matter where these seams are because we're going to be using um, substance painter and um, that does a very good job at concealing the seams all right, so I'm just going to leave this to run just for a minute. And then what once we have sort of outlined all of the areas that we want to unwrap, we can then see what the final result will look like by clicking the flatten button. So you can see here, I'm just looking and finding the areas that I want to keep together and areas I want to attract um, the seams to. So here I just keep going through, finding those edges. 
and um, yeah, I believe at this point it's pretty good. So what I can then do is I can click on the flatten button and uh, I can sort of preview um, the UV um, here. So here we can see the preview of the UVs and they look pretty good. Now the next step after that is then to save our models from ZBrush and import them into Substance Painter. And uh, I'm just setting the initial settings here. Um, I'm gonna have a 4K texture, I'm gonna press OK. And I'm gonna bring in the low poly model and because that's what I wanna do is I wanna use um, Substance Painter here in order for me to generate our normal maps ambient occlusion maps and so on and so forth. And the reason I'm doing that is because I actually want um, Substance to generate curvature maps. Um, and then I can use those curvature maps in order to define some of the edges of our rock. So basically all I'm doing here is I go to bake texture and I find the high poly model, the one that I've just exported from Max. And I'm just gonna adjust some of the cages and I'm just gonna sit here and wait for a moment for the um, baking to happen and you can see here that it's happening happening instantly and we can see the results showing within our viewport now once that's done um what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the paint layers and i'm just going to start to apply some basic materials now all i have in my substance is um, just the basic materials the ones that come with it i haven't created any any for them so I'm just experimenting here. What I end up choosing is the concrete material. I found that that works pretty well. And then what I can do is I can just duplicate multiple layers of that and use some masks in order for me to get some sort of edge wear. So let's just um, skip forward a little and we can see what I'm talking about. Now in this clip, you can see that I've just um, sped it up a little because it's taken a little bit of time. But um, as I said, what I did is I applied the um, the concrete material and then I'm just creating a few different duplicates of this layer and just playing around with the brightness and contrast of them. And so what you can basically see me do here is adding some basic edge wear. So all I want to do is just trace the um, edges or some of the harsher edges. And once I've traced them, what I then do is I then go back, um, I then use a different alpha brush and I change the opacity for the mask and I just start to erase some of uh, that detail so it's not so strong. And then later on what I can do is I can just adjust how, um, how, how much this is um, influenced on the rock by changing the opacity. So you can see here that I'm going back through with that um, basic sort of brush here and I just want to erase, especially the areas in the center. So I just want to break it up and make it look um, not so um, not so strong. I want to make it look a little bit more natural. And you can see that I'm just playing around with different opacities here and uh, different brush sizes. And this is just going to give me a basic idea of what it is that I'm trying to achieve. All right. So once that is completed, then what I want to do is I want to apply... Uh, or at least use the curvature map in order to generate um, in order to generate a different type of um, surface detail. And so the way that I add the sort of alternative detail here is I use a mask. So I duplicate those layers again and I change the color of them. But the key here is I want to use the edit mask generator and then I can change the um, curvature values. Now these curvature values are based on the curvature map that was baked during the baking process. And you can see by just changing the shapes and uh, sorry the values I can get different um, different types of masks uh, different type of mask um, appearances. And then once I go back into the regular mode, I can then just play around with those values and get a more subtle effect. And what this is going to do is it's going to bring out some of the values around the sort of dented areas of our um, maps that we generated um, out of the um, 
high detail um, model here. So where those indents sort of curve in and curve out, it's really going to push them um, and make them pop a little more. As you can see here right now, the the areas where those um, areas sort of dent in and, and we sort of dense in the rock, those sort of become more prominent. So with that being said, that is essentially how I would how I created this a procedural rock. You can then use this for a different, for all kinds of different projects, whether it's a game project or um, architectural. So with that being said, I'd like to thank you for watching and until next time, bye-bye.